Good afternoon. My name is uh, Pyotr Kriworodka. I'm a surgeon, breast surgeon. And uh, before I start my presentation, I want to say thank you very much, Ekaterina Buchko, for possibility uh, to make presentation in this big action and start our party. How imaging date affect the choice of surgery or what I do need from you? I have no disclosure. And uh, these are two big statements declared by the St. Gallen panel experts. The first one is the age should not affect the volume of surgical intervention. The second one is that local recurrence risk depends on quality of surgery and systemic treatment, not the biology of the tumor. This leads us to another modern dogma. Bigger surgery is not better surgery. Mastectomy alone is always an option, but it can hardly be considered an optional scenario for the vast majority of our today's patients. If we take a look at the global trends in breast surgery, breast conservation is by far the leading type of intervention. Unilateral mastectomy rates have been demonstrating steady decrease over the decade and bilateral mastectomy rates have been increased in the US because of the advance in reconstructive surgery and growing demand for high-quality aesthetic outcomes. According to the results of the trial run by Dr. Kavala and present in San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, in 2018, breast conserving surgery provides better outcomes, better satisfaction, this the final result and better psycho-emotional status. Dr. Moreau considered this trial to be the most important impact in the area of breast surgical oncology in 2018. In order to provide the best care and offer breast conservation Whenever possible, top-notch diagnostic approach is essential. Let's take a look into AGO guidelines. Only a combination of different diagnostic modalities can provide a true understanding of localization, size, etc. The surgeon wants the radiologist to precisely describe the size of the tumor, its location, presence of additional fossae, and of course, regional lymph node status. Even a small additional fossa can be a big change in the game. That allows the surgeon not just to resect the breast tissue, but rather to plan and perform oncoplastic surgery that is capable of providing better satisfaction and better aesthetic outcomes. The second issue to be addressed is the nipple areola complex status. There have been multiple trials to determine the safe distance between the tumor and the nipple, but no uniform practice guidelines exist. Nevertheless, each and every surgeon has his idea on which guidelines to stick to. In my practice, I tend to use involvement screening model by, made by Georgetown University. Tumor bed size has not to be less than 3 cm, no clinical symptoms of neck involving, distance from tumor lesion to neck more than 20 mm, and of course, clinical not negative nodes. When in doubt, MRI is a good option, but even frozen section this intraoperative assessment is associated with 13% false negative result. If neck is preserved, patients gain more satisfaction and a better quality of life. Simple as that. Speaking about lymph node status, ultrasound remains world standard, but ultrasound is an operate depend and false negative rate is about 25%. Radiologist judgment is crucial as the determines the amount of surgery in the axilla. If the patient is considered not positive, sentinel node biopsy cannot be performed. 
axillary clearance is associated with high rates of complication and decreases quality of life. A short summary. Take home points. I need primary tumor evolution, type of growth, size, location, orientation, neighboring tissue involvement, if possible, etc. If neodivant systemic treatment we used, treatment response, evolution, regional lymph node evolution. If neodivant systemic therapy, treatment response, evolution of corticomedullary lymph node differentiation, neck involvement information, distance to primary tumor. When determining the lymph node status, we definitely rely not only on ultrasound and palpation. In my practice, I prefer to work on the safe ground. Spec CT is the standard of care diagnostic procedure in my department. It is characterized by high specificity and sensitivity and is also used in response evaluation. Primary tumor marking and effect lymph node marking provides substantial advantages and peaceful sleep for the surgeon. You simply need to be sure you have had the affected tissue removed. Complete response is always the best possible outcome of neoadjuvant therapy, but as long as we have not yet abdominal surgery in this setting. We need appropriate interoperative navigation and careful planning. Complete response in patient this large breast turns out to be a challenging situation. Not being sure about the quality of the surgery you perform in regard of the margin status is a kind of an itch you can't stretch and you just need to wait for the final pathology result feeling just like that fellow on the picture. Clipping the tumor gives you solid confidence that you did a good job. As you can see, the clip is in the middle of the removed sector and a nice distance to from tumor bed to resection margins. And I am okay this, this. Going back to complete response cases, but let's imagine the worst scenario. A patient without previous mammography with clinical complete response and not palpable tumor open completion of neodymium therapy elsewhere and MRI is not available, a perfect storm. In these dire straits, 3D reconstruction of the chest CT scan can be beneficial. It allows you to at least mark the approximate tumor location on the skin. One more thing worth knowing prior to planning modern surgical approach is the skin at subcutaneous fatty tissue layer thickness. Skin sparing, areola sparing, and nipple sparing mastectomies are becoming more and more common, including including surgeries with spray pack device position. I find this classification by Renketi very useful. MRI is useful thing for me. You know better than me its sensitivity and specificity. But uh, when I see this, I can be prepared for some bloody moments and I am thankful for being given this valuable intel. What more? Autologous reconstruction. The goal is to decrease the complication rate as much as possible. The essential thing for that is to determine the status of the vessels of interest. Many patients addressed our department this request for autologous reconstruction after initial surgery done elsewhere. But to my great Unfortunately, I am not oracle and unable to tell whether all the necessary vessels had been preserved. CT angio is the best way 
for me to understand which flap I can use. Chest wall perforatal flap, a final result one month after radiotherapy. CT angio for latissimus dorsi flap, case of delayed reconstruction with sludge skin defect, direct indication for LD flap plus implant. DF flap, CT angio for DF flap. 3D reconstruction of vessel of interest, their skin projection and final result. Take home message, what I need to reconstruct. Ultrasound, neighboring tissue involvement, mammography, subcutaneous fat thickness, MRI, Additional fossae, neck vascularity day, tumor bed projection on skin if needed. CT angio, flap performance date, tumor bed projection if needed. And last but not least, special thanks goes to my team. And thank you very much for your attention.